A seasonal feel in unseasonable times. A chance to take in a panto with a joke for the times. Shake hands! No, 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 no. Oh. we're having hand sanitised, let's tap toes. And then some Christmas shopping. But some of those freedoms have been curtailed for millions across the country and will be for many more after large parts of the south of England were added to the top tier of restrictions. Secretary Hancock. From Thanks Saturday, just Mr. under Speaker. 4 million people Speaker, will move from Tier Speaker. 2 to Mr. Tier Speaker, 3. No one wants tougher restrictions any longer than necessary. But where they are necessary, we must put them in place to prevent the NHS from being overwhelmed and protect life. When the new tiers were introduced earlier this month, just over 40% of the population of England was placed in Tier 3. That increased to 60% on Wednesday, when London and some surrounding areas were placed in the top tier. And from Saturday, 68% of the population of England will be in Tier 3. Good afternoon, everybody. It wasn't meant to be like that. On the day he outlined the new tiers last month, the Prime Minister held out hope of movement down the tiers. The allocation of tiers will be reviewed every 14 days, starting on the 16th of December. So, your tier is not your destiny. Every area has the means of escape. In the end, just three areas in England will move down a tier. When Boris Johnson set a new course for England here in Downing Street last month, he probably didn't have in mind a relaxation of the rules in relatively small parts of the country and a far larger expansion of the top tier. But it's highly likely that government scientists feared that might happen. At the launch of the new system, the Prime Minister said that the top two tiers would drive the virus down. But standing right next to him, England's chief medical officer, Chris Whitty, said that only the very top tier would do that. It's not just Boris Johnson who's being forced into tough new measures. In Northern Ireland, a six-week lockdown will be introduced on the 26th of December. The executive has probably taken its hardest decision, uh, its most deep decision in regards to how we've had to combat COVID collectively. Sir Graham Brady. Back in Westminster, some unhappy Conservative backbenchers. I've got colleagues across the country uh, who are hopping mad about the restrictions that have been put on uh, their constituents uh, when they don't believe it's justified. Sir Graham Brady has his own complaints as his Greater Manchester region remains in Tier 3. I think Greater Manchester as a whole uh, should have gone into Tier 2. Uh, if you look at other comparable areas with similar rates of uh, coronavirus infection, many of them are in lower uh, tiers. Uh, but even if Greater Manchester as a whole didn't go into Tier 2, then at the very least the boroughs in Greater Manchester with the lowest rates of infection, Trafford, Stockport and Tameside, should have done so. The leader of one council put into the top tier talks of a mixed mood. I think people are resigned. I think there are some people who, who like a higher level of restriction because they think it's going to keep them safe. And until the vaccinations are done so that the people who are most at, need, most at risk are able to be vaccinated and made safe, I think there are a lot of people who will want to make sure that they stay at home and keep very, very restricted. But there are other people who will be absolutely devastated. The King's Theatre in South Sea, one of the few theatres that had the courage to do a pantomime this season, now has to cancel. Christmas will herald a brief relaxation of the rules, but then a swift return to restrictions with no guarantee of an end, this side of a successful vaccination programme. In a minute, we'll talk to representatives from the Conservative Party and Labour about the tier review. But first, we're joined by Christina Pargel, Professor of Operational Research at UCL. Christina, what do the numbers say in terms of the tiers working or not working? They say that they're not working, um, particularly tier two. Almost every local authority in tier two saw quite big increases over the last week. Um, and in tier three, it stayed about the same, and that's the most optimistic you can put it. So 
the tier three areas that haven't gone down, like, it's not so much because they're doing something wrong, it's because tier two just is not doing enough to suppress the virus. And we're now at a really difficult situation where every indicator is going in the wrong direction. Why um, is that? What, what, what is the reason for it? Do you think, as some have said, that the vaccination has given people hope so they are not taking the restrictions seriously? I mean, that could be part of it. I don't think there's any single explanation that explains why it's not working. Um, cases in London and the South East started going up before lockdown ended. Um, it's not just restrictions. I think it's something that I've been thinking about for the last two weeks. And there aren't any easy answers. There are just difficult questions, but we have to work it out. And, and in the meantime, we can't afford to release restrictions when hospitalizations are so high. Like we were higher now than we have been since mid-April. I mean, that's really frightening. It's incredible. I can see how dispirited you are by this because you, you want to be able to, to say some answers on this and have some guidance. But as you say, only hard questions. And I think this is, this is incredibly upsetting, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, is it a consolation? But, you know, the, the whole of Europe is struggling with this. We're seeing across Western Europe that only the really toughest restrictions seem to be doing anything right now in winter. And um, hospitalizations are going up in many countries. Um, and I think what's most on my mind right now is, is, is Christmas, just because we know what, whatever happens, is going to make it worse. Um, you know, we've had the British Medical Journal, the Health Services Journal, the British Medical Association, NHS chiefs all saying, we can't do this, we can't do this, we're really struggling. Um, and it just feels like we're going into this period and we're not protecting the NHS and we're not protecting the people who will need the NHS. Um, and I find that that really sad because I just feel like there are going to be hundreds or thousands of more deaths than than there need to be, like just as the vaccine's coming. Um, so are you hoping that the government does change its position in terms of those Christmas relaxation rules? Yeah, I think so. I think I think the fact is that when they made those rules in November, we were in a different position. Lockdown looked like it was working. Cases were coming down. Hospitals were, hospitalizations were coming down. But that's not the case anymore. Like things, um, cases are higher now than they were before lockdown. We're at the highest level of hospital admissions than we have been in the second wave. I mean, we're not in a situation where we can afford to relax further. And the people who will get sick and die because of it are the people who'd be first in line for the vaccine in January. I mean, that's just tragic to me.